Welcome to another installment of Christmas in Quarantine, and today is day 17 of this impromptu miniseries of daily episodes. It's all about keeping our spirits up during the COVID-19 crisis. And if you're listening in real time, it's also the start of the weekend. I know, when we're mostly inside all of the time with limited options for activities, the idea of a weekend loses some of its meaning. But just the same, I hope that you can make some time for keeping the Christmas spirit alive with a good book or a good movie, or another trip with me back to the golden age of radio. Before we get to any of that, I hope as always that you are staying safe and healthy, that you're practicing all of the common sense guidelines and treating the situation with the seriousness it deserves, and taking your advice only from trained medical professionals. Now, today's story was described by Orson Welles himself as... A delicious and utterly delirious rigadoon of a thing entitled The Plot to Overthrow Christmas. It's fun to say rigadoon. I had to look that one up. Turns out it's a French Baroque dance. Now, The Plot to Overthrow Christmas first aired on Christmas Day in 1938. As you're about to hear, it's told entirely in rhyming verse, and it has a plot that's not unlike that of A Kidnapped Santa Claus by Frank L. Baum. I read that one for you last month. But this story is quite a bit darker, but I'm sure you'll enjoy it. It's really a classic piece of Christmas writing and acting and broadcasting that's largely lost on a modern audience, despite the fact that it's freely available online. So let's make our descent to the underworld and see what kind of a plot the fiends down there are cooking up. I'll be back at the end to say goodbye, but for now, please enjoy The Plot to Overthrow Christmas. Now, listen to Orson Welles with Ray Collins in The Plot to Overthrow Christmas by Norman Corwin. This is My Best, starring Orson Welles with Ray Collins in a Christmas story chosen from among his best works, especially for this program, by America's master radio poet, Norman Corwin. America's best stars and the world's best stories. This is My Best, presented each week for your entertainment by... C-R-E-S-T-A B-L-A-N-C-A Presta Blanca Presta Blanca Sheltered from the ocean breezes, nestled among green rolling hills, nurtured by the friendly sunlight, cooled by softly falling rain, there the vines of Cresta Blanca, bursting forth in their green glory, growing, bearing, heavy laden, bring the grapes to luscious fullness, so the vintner quickly harvests, presses from them gold and goodness, tends it gently, now to rest. Till at last the wine is ready, shimmering, fragrant, full of flavor, masterpiece of his perfection. And he hails it proudly, saying, This is my best. This is Cresta Blanca. Good evening. This is Orson Welles. I'm very flattered indeed for the chance to be appearing so soon again on This is My Best. Very particularly in the radio best we have for you tonight. Best is a big word, but it isn't too big for Norman Corwin, who is certainly, and beyond all argument, the best writer the medium has produced. And best is a big word, but it isn't too big for Ray Collins either, who showed us the greater part of tonight's divertisement. If you know of a better actor in radio, please send me his name. I can use him in the Mercury. Here, then, is radio's best, a script by Corwin, and here's Corwin's very best for the holidays, a delicious and utterly delirious rigadoon of a thing entitled The Plot to Overthrow Christmas. Shenley's Cresta Blanca Wine presents The Plot to Overthrow Christmas by Norman Corwin. Starring Orson Welles as Nero with Ray Collins as Santa Claus on This Is My Best. Did you hear about The Plot to Overthrow Christmas? Well, gather ye now from Maine to the Isthmus of Panama and listen to the story of the utter inglory of some gory goings-on in hell. Now, it happened in Hades, ladies and gentlemen. It happened down there that the fiends held a meeting. 
The fiends held a meeting for the purpose of defeating Christmas. With the aid of a fade, a uh, fade on the radio, we'll take you there with a high and a hady hole to hear firsthand the brewing of the plot down in the deepest Stygian grot. A grot is a poetical term for grotto. Whenever you hear my voce sato or sato voce, whichever you prefer, it's just I. Taking pains to make quite sure that nobody makes a poetical illusion which might in any way create confusion. I return you now to the voice you were hearing before I had to do this interfering. As I was saying, in this Stygian grot, the notables of Limbo hatched a plot. And what went on in the sulfurous hole will soon pick up by remote control. You mustn't mind if it sounds erratic. That's merely intraterrestrial static. And don't be surprised if you're deafened by thunder just as we start on our journey under. And so below, via radio, to the regions where legions of the damned go. Concerto. You should look to the improvement of your manners. Sir, if you please my apologies. I would not have intruded upon your recital if the matters were not so terribly vital. The most important matter in the world is piddling when it comes to be compared with Nero's fiddling. Now, what you say may be very true, but I have been sent here to summon you to a great mass meeting of the tortured souls down in the grot of the flaming coals. Why are we meeting? Who's on the spot? We're meeting in order to fabricate a plot. A plot against the festival that mortal men comfort in and gladden in again and again. You see, every year... Never mind the facts. I don't want to hear how mortal man acts. The only information about which I care concerns the mass meeting and who will be there. His wickedness, Mephisto, will preside. Naturally. And several of the Borges will be sitting at his side. And down in front by the sizzling podium will be many personalities known for their odium. Odium. Haman Caliglia. Medusa and Legree. That's all very nice, but what about me? Oh, you'll be sitting in row A, center, between Ivan the Terrible, the Tormentor, and Ceci. Mercy, why, they're both deranged. Do you, do you wish me to see if your seat can be changed? Yes, if you will, please. Taste comes first, even though a soul may be eternally cursed. Right, oh. So you at the meeting then? Yes. So now back to my fiddling again. <laughs> This is I, the subtle voce person. It should have been explained that Nero is rehearsing for nothing in particular. He's just that way. While Hell's Fires burns, he likes to play. It makes him feel a little more at home. It's just an avocation he picked up at Rome. The meeting will now come to order, please. I've called you here from over 60 seas of boiling pitch and blazing phosphorus to stop what constitutes a loss for us. And this is the reason. Though we've done well in carrying forward the work of hell, we've left a very big job unfinished. After all these years, there is undiminished goodwill on earth every late December because of Christmas. Now, please remember that as long as this continues to be... The race of men will not belong to me. I will listen now to any questions you may want to ask. And then, suggestions. Mr. Chairman! Mr. Chairman! Brother Heyman has the floor. You say we've done well in our efforts to sell evil? I say we've done better. We have carried out the letter of your law. We've done what I think is a pretty good job. And I say as a veteran demon... See down there, Heyman. Enough of this folly. Sit down yourself. You're off your trolley. Sit down. For I am Ivan the Terrible. You're telling us why you're unbearable. Yeah. Yeah. Hello, demons. 
This is no way to act. Please proceed with a little more tact. I want more decorum in this forum. These personal remarks you make must cease. Now, Brother Ivan, will you speak your piece? I merely want to say in a casual way that Heyman is a radical. He always gets fanatical. Why anybody think to hear him snort that the work of the devil should just stop short? Mr. Chairman, Brother Ivan is a demagogue with a brain like a fly and the manners of a hog. He says that... Uh, uh, enough! We will hear from others. Surely there must be among you brothers enough of venom and malevolence to crush a mortal man's benevolence. It's come to this. Are we going to let a little holiday like Christmas... Get the better of us all down here below? No, 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 no. Well, sirs, very well. Let's go. Let's lay down our plans now to overthrow this Christmas business and all that guff of holly and mistletoe and stuff. Mr. 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 Chairman. Mr. Chairman. Brother Caligula may take the floor. Mr. Chairman, I abhor as a former emperor anything which curbs our rule. Let us give some presents, too. Candy sticks and things to chew. Fruits and nuts. And little cakes. Poisonous as rattlesnakes. Bravo. Let our subtlest worker be by chloride of mercury. Let us wrap in tinsel bright little gifts of dynamite. Bravo. Work things so that men will fear when 1225 draws near. Soon at this rate, if you please, men will hang from Christmas trees. <laughs> <laughs> My dear Caligula. Permit the chair to say that we think you've got something there. And now, with this fine start, let's hear some more. Yes, Brother Nero, do you want the floor? With all due respect to Caligula's views, I think there's a better method we can use. I've heard just lately men are giving the raz to classical music by making it jazz. They're swinging Bach, and what is keener, they're doing the shag to Palestrina. As a connoisseur of music, of course, I love the works of Rimsey Corsica, but today I note with a bitter shrug they've made Scheherazade a jitterbug. Much as we admire your clever rhyme, will you get to the point? We're wasting time. I was just about to say, when interrupted, that Christmas can easily be corrupted if you take and swing all the Christmas carols. I think of the evil. Just barrels and barrels of sacrilege. <laughs> Every time you play a pious song in a profane way, why, once you entice them to swing Noel, then victory belongs to us fiends. Well... <laughs> Mr. Chairman, Mr. Chairman, Mr. Legree, I'd like to say that it seems to me that you all is barking up a coolness tree. I think Mr. Nero has made a wrong guess. The way to go about it is to get in Congress... And bribe a bunch of senators who know their oaths. And just make a purchase of a block of votes. They can all get together and pass a law where there ain't going to be no Christmas anymore. I think Legree's suggestion is abuse. It's very cute. And quite astute. By the eternal night. That's right. Mr. Chairman. Mr. Chairman. Yes, Miss Borgia. I say that we should all give pause to think about this Santa Claus. He is the man behind the scenes, the symbol of what Christmas means. If we could rub him out, my friend, our troubles would be at an end. Just think how it would tickle us to liquidate St. Nicholas. A girl like me could fascinate the guy and then assassinate. Do you think that you could do it, pretty one? Are you sure you wouldn't be by pity, one? Mm -hmm. Sometimes you are an awful tease, my master Mephistopheles. Ain't I murdered several dozens, poisoned uncles, aunts, and cousins? Men of virtue all have cussed me. I'm sure that you can trust me. Of that we have a particle of doubt, Miss Borgia. I'm sure we all have nothing but kind feelings towards you. But many times a woman spy, alas, the doors her victims... Dames make poor ambassadors. Do you imply that such defects are found inherent in my sex? That I do. Well, listen here, old Ironsides. You're heading for some cyanides. You've crossed a Borgia. And you know the consequences that follow. Come, oh, come, disciples. This is very bad. There's nothing to be gained by getting mad. Now, suppose we put the matter to a vote. All those in favor of the motion made by Fiend Caligula, which was to shade the glamour of a holiday by using selected poisons of our choosing, all those in favor will please signify by rising to their feet and saying aye. Aye! 
One vote in favor, Caligula's. And those opposed? No. The motion is defeated. Up we bring the plan of Brother Nero's, viz. to swing the hymns and pious music. All those four will please respond by raising up a paw. Four! And those against? Against! <laughs> Very well. Now, the project of Legree's. Who is there here who totally agrees? I do. Legree votes for himself. And those opposed? I do. And now, all those who favor Borgia's cause. It being to eliminate Santa Claus. Aye, aye, aye! And those opposed? Seems the women have a way with them. At least they have carried the day with them. <laughs> Motions carried. And now we'll decide which one of us will take Nick for a ride. We'll all draw lots and thus settle the moot point of who will be sent to execute. You are listening to This Is My Best. And in just a few moments, we'll tell you the rest. But ere we return to this story of strife, a word, if you please, of a season that's ripe with greetings and goodies and food served so fine with the elegant touch of a good table wine. A good table wine, Cresta Blanca, California Sauterne. A wine that is golden, delicious, and light. A wine that will earn you praises galore. A distinctive dry wine that will add extra zest to your Christmas Day dinner made up of the best. The name, once again, Cresta Blanca Sauterne. And now back to the story. So we may all learn from our old friend Sata Voce, visiting down where it's eternal noche. This is your old friend Sata Voce visiting down where it's eternal noche. Uh, noche is Spanish for night, you know, merely a reference just to show that English isn't all I have to go by. Oh, well, I guess I've missed my calling. I should have been a lobbyist. You see, I'm stalling to give them time to finish the voting. Let's see, the weather. Now I'm quoting the Daily Hellion. Continued heat both overhead and under feet. Light showers of brimstone toward the evening hours. Well, that's what it says here. I'm not fibbing. <laughs> How am I doing with my ad living? Ah, this is a thing you gabbered have fun with. <gasps> Say, the drawing should soon be done with. We expect the results at any moment now, as soon as we... The lots have been drawn. And I'm glad to say the honor has fallen Nero's way. Yeah! Now, Nero, you are charged with a great task... It's the evilest deed that we could ask a fiend to do. We'll be proud of you. Now, just one moment. How do I get there? What do I wear? Is it dry or wet there? Is it fact or fancy or just word of mouth that he lives at the pole? Is it north or south? What shall I use when it comes to showdown? A gun or a dagger? Give me the lowdown. Now, Nero, you needn't sound so tragic. You'll get to Earth by the blackest magic. To create an express elevator is simple for an expert spell creator. With a lot of pyrotechnic dazzle, we'll let you off at a hill in Basel, Switzerland. From there, you will make your way to the Arctic Circle, then break your way through ice with a blowtorch. After a while, you're bound to reach Santa's domicile. And once you get there, ah, oh, my dear Nero, all of our work will have gone for zero if you don't succeed in your assignment. I know. But first, we don't succeed. We can try and try again, but there's no need because nothing will come of it. Meaning no offense, do you mind if I take my departure hence? And that, my friends, was a big brass gong. It's using this story right along to indicate that we're about to travel to points where the plot will further unravel. And now, if Ambassador Nero elects, we'll have another spot of sound effects. <laughs> Is this Basel, Switzerland? Or is it already Donner and Blitzerland? Donner and Blitzerland's 5,000 miles away. Thank you, mister, and good day. Tell me, stranger, because I've lost stock, where am I now? In Vladivostok. Listen, stranger, after all these centuries of blistering heat, now I have to suffer from freezing feet. I'm wincing with pain from this pesky toe. Now speak English, Eskimo. I declare by my frenetic soul I must be over the magnetic pole. My watch has stopped. Can that be right? I wonder. Ah, uh, light. 
A light! In a moment now, you'll hear me knock on Santa's door. And he'll unlock it. Never more to lock again. <laughs> coming, coming! So is doom. <laughs> How do you do, sir? Very well indeed, and you, sir. Splendidly. Won't you come right in? Take your coat off. I see your chin is frozen. Also, your hands and knees. Sit down while I get you some antifreeze. Don't bother, sir. I will not be long. I'm about to perpetrate a frightful wrong. In short, I'm going to do away with... Take it. Take it easy. Do not play with that gun. I know all about you. Oh, really? Haven't I had my agent scout you for weeks? You've come all this way to abolish Christmas. Now, let me say... Listen, Santa, I'm no callow stripling. I've read Ernest Hemingway and Kipling. <laughs> and also the shooting of Dan McGrew and plenty of detective stories, too. And just to show you what a broad guy I am, I've also read the ruby out of Omer Khayyam. Do you think that a fellow with his reading so graded could have learned so little as to be dissuaded from a main objective? <laughs> hey, don't make me giggle. I'd feel a lot better if you wouldn't wiggle that gun so... Much as I'm impressed with your education, I honestly believe that a figure of your station should have given more thought to the ways of man and less devotion to the cult of Pam. I came to dispatch a duty, so don't hand me any of this tootie fruity. If you've any last words you want to say, then spell them. I haven't got all day. Well, now, now, what's the rush? Unless I've counted wrong, the polar day has always been six months long. Well, after I've disposed of you, I've got to hurry right back to hell. Or they'll begin to worry. Not about you, but about your career in homicide. Do you think that the mere loss of you would make them hysterical? Their only interest is numerical. Think so? Mephisto wants to rule just as much of humanity as possible for reasons of personal vanity. By the sticks, you're right. To think that he'd dare. Are there any ladies here? Will you permit me to swear? My answer to that is an emphatic no. There are several lady dolls in the toy room below. Oh, Cassius. Oh, Claudius. Oh, Naphthalene. What a fool I've been. What a fool I've been. Wait. Wait, I think I see what you're after. You're as clever as a big-time Roman grafter. Do you think I could be that meanly deceptive to Satan? Why, Santa, I'm keenly perceptive. I can see right through all your clever ruses. Nero can be plenty foxy when he chooses. I'll have you know that I'm partly a dreamer, partly a wit, and partly a schemer. I'm part philosophical and also part mystic. I suppose you fancy that you're highly artistic. Fancy? Why, I have such a sense of beauty. Don't hand me a helping of Tutti Frutti. Any creature who really had beauty in his soul would appreciate Christmas. He would know that the whole idea of the holiday was one of such power that all the fiends below might gnash their fangs and glower, yet never in a million years could do it harm. Because it has a glory, a greatness, a charm that you would know nothing about. Yes, that's so. The spirit that it venerates. The good cheer that it generates are things far, far beyond you. For all your wealth, no man on earth could sell ye these. Am I so cursed as that? Will you tell me, please, what beauties there may be that I have never seen? Have you ever seen a Christmas tree, tall and green, smelling of woodlands covered with a sheen of silverness, its branches bending low with the fruits of human kindness instead of snow? No. Have you ever closely witnessed what takes place any Christmas morning on a young child's face? Or perceived any beauties purer than the joys distilled in the hearts of little girls and boys? Have you ever watched a fire in a fireplace on a Christmas Eve? Or listened to grace at table heavy with fruits and cakes and all the wonders that a kitchen makes? Fowls and pastries, wines and meats and nuts and raisins and candied sweets? Have you ever seen mistletoe hanging from a ceiling? In frosty air, heard a far bell pealing. Have you ever seen the beauty of a sprig of holly? Or felt for a moment how it feels to be jolly? Golly. Have you ever known how exceedingly pleasant it is to unwrap a Christmas present? Did you ever know how much cheer it lends to be wished a Merry Christmas by all your friends? Did you ever experience the fun of giving? Do you know it all? Of the joys of living? I guess I don't. For all of me, I never knew such things could be. Just think how long in ignorance I've slept. It must have been the company you've kept. 
I was a wicked tyrant once, you know. Ah, yes, but that was centuries ago. You really had no way of knowing. Perhaps. I guess that I'll be going. I really should be getting on my way. But do you have to? Don't you want to stay? Well, you see, I'm, I'm just a bit... Embarrassed? Well, yes, sir. Now, don't look so harassed. I know just why you came and who it was that sent you. But that's all done with. I take it you repent you of all your past mistakes. With many pains and aches of conscience. Then you are welcome here. Please take your hat off. Your coat. Your muffler also. Take your spat off. What happened to the other one? No matter. You're pretty thin. You'll presently be fatter. I serve good food here. I'll get you a platter of steak and mushrooms. Medium or rare, I'll bet that you're as hungry as a bear. A while ago you asked me if I understood good cheer. I do so now, St. Nicholas. I see it standing here. I want to ask you something, sir. Now, now, please don't give a yelp. Is there any sort of work to do where I can be of help? Indeed there is, indeed there is. And I am glad you asked me. I have so many toys to make this year, the job's got past me. But first, you sit and eat this bowl. I've got a little trifle I'd like for you to see. So you sit right here and stifle your curiosity? I'll get it for you right away. Well, well, who'd ever think it? Will wonders never cease? At last, after all these centuries... I'm so happy I could buzz. Well, here it is, Nero, my boy. By way of Christmas presents, I offer you this little gift. Oh, but Santa, for what reason? A very good one, sir, to wit. Compliments of the season. Well, go ahead and open it. Why stand there so reflecting? I'm just collecting thoughts, St. Eh, Nicholas. My thoughts, I'm just collecting. Just think how far a tiny bit of fellowship will carry us. Oh, well. I say, what's this? What's this? It's a Stradivarius. Why, thank you. Thanks a million times. I don't know what to say to you. I'll tell you what I'll do, St. Nick. I'll start right in and play for you. I'll play, I'll play, I'll play, I'll play, I'll play all night and day for you. Fine. Here's some music. I'm sure you'll play it well. It's a little piece entitled Noel, Noel. <laughs> <laughs> This is I. Remember me, your subtle Gucci friend? I've just come back to tell you that the story's at an end. We join the audience here in Hollywood and applauding Orson Welles and Ray Collins. In Norman Corwin's The Plot to Overthrow Christmas. Tonight's story on This Is My Best. Presented by Shanley's Crest of Blanca Wine. Mr. Wells will be back in a moment to tell you about next week. And now once more, here is John McIntyre, your Crest of Blanca host. Perhaps one of the most interesting accounts of Christmas in early colonial days is of a dinner given by a prominent Virginia family. The festive Christmas table abounded with an elegant variety of turkeys, roast beef, Veal, ducks, hams, puddings, jellies, oranges, apples, nuts, figs, and a variety of fine wines and punches. Today in America, our meals are less elaborate. However, it's still in the best American tradition to serve a fine wine like Presta Blanca with the Christmas dinner. It will lend a charming, a friendly touch to your festive Christmas table. Choose the Presta Blanca California wine your guests like best and serve it well chilled. It may be a white table wine, like Chablis or Riesling. Or it may be a red table wine, like Burgundy or Claret. No matter what type of wine you choose, as long as the words Cresta Blanca are on the bottle, you can rest assured you are serving the crest of quality in wine since 1889. And now, Orson Welles. Thank you. Thank you, and I'm speaking also for two of the finest performers who ever stood before a microphone, Ray Collins, who was Santa Claus tonight, and John Brown, who was the devil. And now about next week's offering. <laughs> on this is my best. I'm looking forward to it. It's a pleasure to tell you about it now. Two great American humorists are involved, the writer and artist James Thurber, from whose antic gallery of sorrowful dogs, wistful little men, and monstrous women has been chosen a strange and I think entirely perfect study the secret life of Walter Mitty. The other great humorist involved is a writer, too, and a very fine one, but you know him just as well and love him as an actor. He will play Walter Mitty, and nobody anywhere ever could play it better than Robert Benchley. 
I know we'll all be listening, and until then, it's my privilege to remain, as always, obediently yours. Les LeBlanc's new program is prepared in collaboration with Whit Burnett, editor of the book, This Is My Best. The music is composed and conducted by Bernard Katz. Ray Collins will soon be seen in Metro-Goldwyn-Mayer's The Hidden Eye. Don't forget next week when your star on This Is My Best will be Robert Benchley in The Secret Life of Walter Mitty. And remember, whenever you dine, dine with wine and make it the best wine. C-R-E-S-T-A. B-L-A-N-C-A. Presta Blanca. Presta Blanca. This is my best. The presentation of the Crestle Blanca Wine Company of Livermore, California, came to you from Columbia's Playhouse in Hollywood. Owen James speaking. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System. WBNS Columbus. So, what did you think of that? Will the plot to overthrow Christmas become a normal part of your Christmas? Either way, I hope you enjoyed listening to it with me today. And until we meet again, which will be tomorrow, let me remind you as always that Christmas Past is produced in sunny San Mateo, California by yours truly, Brian Earle. You can always drop me a line at christmaspastpodcast at gmail.com or reach out on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. And if you haven't yet joined the Christmas Past private Facebook group, maybe today's the day you will. And if you're enjoying these daily episodes, I'll bet there are people in your life who could also use a little Christmas spirit these days, so why not help more people discover the show? It's as simple as telling a friend about it or leaving a review on Apple Podcasts. And if you do leave a review, I'll even send you a Christmas Past sticker and a handwritten Christmas card as my way of saying thanks. Message me for details about that. Until tomorrow, stay safe and healthy, look out for one another, and may your days be merry and bright.